bans for game number one, Jinair versus KD. LeBlanc will be the first ban from the Jinair side, and there's the Azir ban against GBM. And LeBlanc played by Nagne in three out of their five games so far this season, so trying to make him a little bit more uncomfortable. He has put up some big score lines on that champion. And there is a Sejuani against Score. Score's been very good on that champion. Probably his best jungler uh, yeah, lately. He's, he's been looking really good on Sejuani, I agree. So, Braga's ban. Score's a really dangerous Rex side, though. So here's the thing, yeah, ban the Sivir, and so this means Jinair will either get the Callisto or the Bard, or a number of other pretty decent picks. So I wonder what KT's gonna... Yeah, KT has to be... Here. KT, but KT is a team that has let the Callista go through and dealt with it. They're That's, one of the few true, teams yeah. that has had success. Now, that was against Samsung, but at the same time, if you have to not give somebody a pick on Samsung, I would avoid giving Fury the pick because he's probably their best player. So they felt comfortable. They had an bard. answer to it, and it's going to be the Bard. So they will let the Callista go through for Pilot. Pilot the player who has been so good at carrying Jin Air, 31 KDA across two best of three so far. Yeah, and will they give him the Callista? Are they gonna first pick that? Well, now if they do, it does leave a lot open for KD. I would be worried though, because they're gonna try and take the Alistair to avoid the Callista damage perhaps, but okay. KT can take Callista Thresh. Yeah, I feel like you just go with the Callista here, you know? It's a hard choice because you know that KT will take Urgot Alistair if yeah, you don't. That's that's true. So they're okay. gonna take Alistair instead. That's the thought process though, I'm pretty sure. Well, if we don't take the Alistair here, they will take Alistair Urgot against Callista, and that does cause problems for Callista. That is true. So will we see the Callista Thresh taken by KT, or are they going to just kind of pass it up now? Well, I think they they really should take Callista now. If they're gonna leave it up like that. But they Callista Cassiopeia, pretty, pretty yep. strong. Very strong. And KT has been so good about getting incredibly good teams they, for they themselves. Have, Their pick and ban they has have been fantastic. A great draft almost yeah. all the time. They figure out little ways to mind game you like this yeah. on the fly so well. Man, Callista Cassiopeia, that is probably two of the strongest champs in but the game see, you could pick up right now. Here's the genius in what KT's doing. So they either, they, they know Pilot has been carrying this team and they know his strength right now. So they force a situation where if Callista is picked, they pick Urgot Alistair, and then they shut down Pilot. But, and even though Pilot has had some good games on Urgot right now, he can't have as much of an effect as he could on something that carries harder, like Vayne. So now if they pick Urgot Alistair, well then Pilot's role in this game has been minimized. And when we look at KT, who's been carrying KT? It's not been really Arrow, it's been Someday and Nagne. So this is a really clever draft, I feel, to try and minimize Jyn Air's strengths. Well, I wonder if we're gonna see the Yasuo from GBM again. See how well that might handle the Cassiopeia. It blocks you know, the Twin Fangs and stuff, I believe, so. Not picking it just yet, no need. No, I don't think that yeah, Rex They're going to take the Yasuo in the mid lane this game. I think GBM learned his lesson, or at least I <laughs> hope he did. So Rek'Sai and Rumble uh, just going for that early game power. And KT now probably will take Thresh at some point and maybe get some tankiness now. They need a front line for this Callista. They've got a great dual threat in Callista and Cassiopeia. And what will the jungler be for KT at this point? That's what I'm kind of wondering. Nunu would be really good. And Nunu makes sense. We know Score has played it in the past. He's also played Evelyn, but I don't think that would fit into this comp too well. No, you, yeah, want, the, the you want the Nunu here because he offers more peel for the Callista. Nunu, right. one of the best champions with Callista, not only because of the blood boil, but just because the absolute zero gives Callista a lot of room to maneuver around and auto attack. Oh, they're gonna go for the, the Evelyn. They're gonna go for the Evelyn instead, okay. Well, I agree with you completely, but Score has been liking that Evelyn lately. Now this, I don't know what they're going to do. They have to take some sort of disengage support right now just to, it's really good for Cassiopeia too, because both of them can just sit in absolute zero and it does a lot of peeling work. But they go for the heavier engage with Evelyn Maokai. Well, this is sort of the KT style, right? They do prefer the heavy engage. Yeah. So what's it gonna be? 
Will it be that vein actually for Pilot? Ezra would be a much safer choice. But they're gonna be lacking in damage, I think. And they still need that mid laner as well, too. Well, they should. They have to be worried about ending up in a 2v2 versus Callista. Yeah. Taking Vayne here would be pretty risky. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right, GBM, it was getting on the Varus train. Oh. Let's do it. Everybody play Varus. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, Vayne Varus. It's time. Again, Rumble in the top lane with the Varus, so at least you have a mix of damage. And they have some damage late game, but peeling for this Vayne is going to be super hard yeah. with this composition late. Well, the Thresh is going to cause so many problems for Jyn Air as well, too. I mean, if either Vayne or Varus gets hooked, it's kind of lights out for Jyn Air as a team. Yeah, and especially because they have the Evelyn now, who will be coming in for flanks. And Someday yeah. is actually one of the best Televar flaggers. I love the Annie pick here. Hmm. I absolutely love it. That's a pretty if they get engage. into a 2v2 with Callista Annie versus Vayne, Vayne is in such trouble, and they have a strong engage against Varus, who doesn't really have any ways to get out of it. So, well, this is three very form strong of engage, three forms of very strong engage. Someday is known for his teleport flank engages. He's one of the best players at pulling that off. Yeah. And I mean, you just have to think about these team fights too. Yeah, Vayne gets hit with Tibbers, it's over. I mean, if Vayne is trying to tumble around, Annie can stun her very easily. I think once again, KT has picked themselves into a pretty amazing team yeah, against their opponents. Actually, considering what Jyn Air picked after Evelyn was chosen, I think Evelyn was absolutely the better pick here. Hmm. Interesting. Because well, you need that engage on their back line, and they, you just have so many tools right now. You can engage straight on with Annie to their back line. You can have two champions that flank, and you have two very high damage carries, especially Cassiopeia for the late game. So this is going to be, I think Jyn Air pretty has to conclusively outplay KT Rolster in the laning phase if they want to win this game. It's going to be a, a bit of a challenge, it's to gonna say the least. It's going to be so hard for them to peel yeah. for their 80 carries late. Well, we saw Faker's first Varus game. We saw Coco's first Varus game. Now it's time for GBM's first mid lane Varus game. It's all wins so far, GBM. Don't ruin the trend, man. You don't want to be the only guy that loses with Varus, do you? <laughs> the pressure's on for Jyn Air right now. We'll see if they can take on this pretty scary cop from KT. It's time to, time to get in the game. All right, welcome to Summoner's Rift. Jyn Air Green Wings. Taking on the KT Rolster organization here in our second best of three of our final day of Champions Summer this week. Well, I'm very intrigued at how Jenner is going to fight in the late game. They have Chaser, who, whose peel consists of unburrowing under a couple of people. Maybe Trace, who gets a uh, Rylai's and then GBM peeling for himself and then maybe like a pulverize or a headbutt. Yeah, well, Otherwise, I mean, it's going to be pilots making crazy positional plays. GBM's ult, I mean, Varus's ult does kind of stop heavy engages cold. So they do have that. They do have the slow from Halo Varos. They do have Alistar kind of punting people out of there. The Equalizer. So, I mean, Jyn Air has options. It's just going to be difficult to coordinate they're, it all, you know? They're pretty bad options. And yes, the Chain of Corruption does stop somebody cold, but there are going to be multiple flanks happening on them. So they can pick one direction, and that's it. And Chain of Corruption is at its most effective when it can spread out to those additional targets. Of course, so yeah. This is, this is a dicey situation. And Callista Annie, what a brutal lane. Now, they're not going to get it, unfortunately, for KT. Yep, it's going to be the 2v1 in top and in bottom. Looks like Nagne just getting the little Raptors to start things off. A little bit of help from Someday. And he'll be able to come to lane with a little bit of an XB bonus. Here we go. Yep, the oh. harass begins. Wow, this is really annoying too. Yes, it is. Oh. 
Well, they started on the weak side, so Fixer could just walk in there. Now we have Arrow coming down as well. This could not be good. Stun loaded up, looks like. Yep. I believe so. Yeah, a lot of damage coming in. Red buff, is it taken? Oh, it was taken by Chaser, I believe, but he is taking a lot of damage here. Yep, and also not going to hit his next level, so yeah. some of these little camps going to go away very hairy situation. Trace going to walk up into the top side, but the freeze was already established. He's going to try and break it, looks like, but Arrow and I don't think he's going to get there in time. Be there. Yeah. yeah. Looking pretty good so far for KT. Doing a good job of harassing at that blue. That slows down Chaser quite a bit now. No counter jungling or anything from Score, you know, coming in to take any camps, but either way, wow, look at this. GBM already really poked out of lane. He's got to go back. Well, he has a flask, so. Oh, yeah, I suppose. He'll be able to slowly sustain his way back up into relevance. And there's a TP. Topside Trace coming right back. Got to be careful, though. After Sweet joins him up there, Freeze going pretty well for Vayne. And someday going to walk down two lane with the help of Fixer also right now. So it looks like everything's stabilized. Mm -hmm. No top laner with too much of an advantage after a scary moment for Jin Air early in this game. Yeah. Well, two to four CS. <laughs> Not a lot of CS to speak of for any side right now. Arrow getting a good opportunity to get some decent farm in. Yeah, he's going to be up there by himself. Fixer yeah. starting to get some wards so that Evelyn can move freely and start to harass Chaser. There is a oh, ward hi. down. Chaser's only level two right now due to yeah. that harassment, so he has score. to be super careful. Going to go ahead and smite that just to get away. Well, he's probably going to smite it anyway. But yeah, That's the great thing about Rek'Sai, though. Good against Evelyn. Can see her with that tremor sense. Yep, true enough. So a lot of Evelyn's advantage disappears. And more resilient to some early harassment, too, just because you're going to heal up with that passive. So not in the worst spot ever on this Rek'Sai. Oh, hi. I was just going to walk in, I guess. Why not? Nope, got to be a little bit careful here. And remember, they did, uh, this is 5.9, so that means Calista does not get any bonus range when she's hopping backwards. Yeah, a little bit of a change. Yep, just a little bit of a nerf. But lane swapping against Calista is very powerful because a lot of her trades are based on her soul bound. Yeah, pretty much. So she actually can't harass very well in a 1v1 or a 1v2 situation. Not sure they exactly need Sweet up here at the moment, but Annie coming back up right now to engage in the 2v2, and that harassment should become a little bit more dangerous. Yeah, with Chaser getting the Rift Scuttler too, they'll have a, some good vision in the river anyway. Yep, more action. There's a stun on to Trace for the moment. And are coming GBM. in. Evelyn is there, though. Yeah, well, Score's recalling, though. So he's not really going to be there for long. Yep, completes the recall. There he goes. Oh, I spoke too soon. There he goes. Now completing it. Arrow back Two away. Flat, or just one flash, actually. Fixer didn't have to use his right there, but that's very handy. So pushing up in a little bit of a dangerous situation. Yep, Sweet having to burn his flash, but Arrow just... Oh, actually, arrow flashing, yeah. Yeah, arrow flash. Yeah, sweet flash as well. So flash for flash, I suppose. GBM. A little bit down in CS, but we've seen what Nagde has been able to do as far as harassment goes on this Cassiopeia. And Pilot's really taking no risks either, just heading back to farm up the Krugs. Knows there's a ward there. So that should give them some indication about where Rek'Sai is going to be in this game. About that camp on the bottom side of the map still coming over there anyway. And there is Evelyn sneaking into the jungle. They see, they saw Evelyn on the pink ward. Looks like that's in the river. Score knows there's a ward around somewhere, so he will find the pink and take it out on the recall. Yep, there it is. And so, a fairly passive start to the game, aside from a little bit of action from Chaser trying to make things happen. Yeah, score really farming hard early. Now might finally gank the bottom side. They know there's no wards in the river with the pink position there. And now they're going to try and hand off the blue buff right away. 
and then maybe actually accomplish something. Surprised that score is not ganking at all pre-6. Yeah, like you said, just farming really hard and trying to hit that level 6 quickly. I mean, he is a level up on Chaser right now. So he might be able to get some level 6 ganks going a little bit sooner. Two tier champs in the mid lane, though, so nobody really wanting to make moves until they actually do something with that advantage. GBM is going to be seen and spotted as well by that pink ward that he placed down, so that was where Evelyn is. They've done a good job of keeping eyes on Evelyn this whole time, and now they can see her one more time. Yep, score. Grabbing that speed boost, he's just going to be happy taking out the, uh, there we go, taking out the tunnel. Yep. GBM a little bit behind again. Oh, there we go. Blue buff up again. Chaser AD. can't see this coming. Yep, that's right. They throw him in. They force a flash from Chaser, and they're going to be able to take this blue buff, it looks like. GBM going to try to snipe it. Can't get there in time to use the Q to do it. Yeah, oh. they can't fight this, really. Oh, boy. KT getting the stun onto Trace here. That was used very early. Trace having to flash over the wall to escape, and KT nothing, a nice little early edge. Nothing they could do there. GBM was zoned out behind the blue buff because Nagne was in the river, so that was at best a 4v3 in favor of KT, and especially with Trace having no equalizer, walking into that river was really dangerous. And he's punished for it, just loses the summoner, not the first blood, but that could have gone very badly. Meanwhile, Pilot's been able to get a little bit of time down in the bot lane to free farm. Able to get a, a bit of a CS lead on the arrow, but not enough of one to really make a huge difference yet. And someday going to go back to the top side now as we'll return to standard lanes yeah. for the rest of this one. Arrow really wants to make it count with this Callista, try and get an advantage in the laning phase and snowball it out because if all things are even, of course, that vein going to be much more impactful in the late game. But that said, Arrow has a lot more peel for him, depending on the situation. So this is still a kind of wonky comp by Jyn Air. Yeah. And they've had to burn a lot of summoners just to stay alive so far, but no first blood for KT yet. Well, we just haven't seen any ganks from score. He's not been interested in making too many plays on the lanes. and. He's got that warrior enchanted level six. He has to do something with this. Yeah, I'm sure he's gonna start to put some pressure on now. I mean, if I mean, there's nothing else to really wait for at this point. Gotta start making some plays. Oh, sun onto sweet, sweet taking a lot of damage there. Actually, healing up. There's uh -oh. the pulverize. Nice headbutt onto fixer. Fixer getting taken back out by Calista. They're gonna throw him back in. First blood taken by Arrow. Equalizer comes down. Not really hitting anybody, though. Score well, just taking a bit of damage, but he'll get out. Yeah, Score Someday actually, they're the still going. Cassiopeia is here. That's right, Nagne coming down to help out. Arrow and Someday, Trace taking a lot of damage. Cassiopeia over the wall, and Arrow picks up another kill, and that is the last thing that Jyn Air wants right now, that Callista getting kills. Yeah, and two kills at that as well. GBM yeah. still farming out, and they're going to take a dragon off of it, so Great setup from KT. They knew that Score was there to back them up on that gank, and they had the damage. So it looked like for Sweet, there was going to be an opportunity to get some damage down onto Fixer because his stun was blown. But in reality, there was the cavalry was coming in from behind, and they had a good teleport as well. Well, it was a nice try to separate Annie away from the rest of KT, but Fate's Call just brought him right back in. Yeah. So that was quickly overcome, and then got the knock up as well. And then Trace, because he had to blow that flash on the top side, went down as the second kill. In spite of getting a pretty decent equalizer down, he overplayed his hand. Yeah. When Callista was coming in with that big BF sword. Hmm. Isn't saying big BF sword kind of redundant? If we acknowledge <laughs> that BF sword may mean something that is inappropriate, yes. Best friend sword. There you go. See, not big then. The big best friend sword. That's what it means. So you're right. Not redundant at all. I like how Riot makes items that we can't actually refer to on broadcast. Yeah. Good guy, Riot. Yep. The big Frank sword. <laughs> the big Franking sword. That's right. The big frog sword. Getting closer. Well, 
now Arrow's really going to be able to bully out, bully out this lane. Yeah, he's got a couple kills. Got the sword that shall not be named, and he's doing a lot of damage. He hasn't gone back to actually spend that money, though, yet, so he's waiting on that one right now. Yeah. Seeing how much of an advantage he can take. Nagne will take the blue buff. GBM still very blue buff poor, fortunately for him. So his tier going to be delayed, and Nagne feels very comfortable. No armor for him early, just going straight into the Archangel staff. So he's been able to avoid a lot of that poke damage and take that CS lead. Yeah, why not? I mean, they know that if they're in a team fight where both he and Kalista can start piling on the damage, there's not very much that Jyn'Air can do. That's a lot of damage. And here we go, possible gank coming in. There, oh, score seen by the Tremor Sense. Yep. For the umpteenth time this game. Well, Rek'Sai is pretty good against Evelyn in that way. And they, they did pick the Evelyn into the Rek'Sai, full yes, knowledge that that was what the composition was going to be. Also, GBM picking the Varus into the Cassiopeia. Yep, brave. Perhaps not wise, but brave. Yeah, so Fixer just getting some wards down as well, too. And KT looking like they want to start to push this bot lane. Setting up some proper vision for that. Yeah, Bloodthirster already completed, so any trades definitely going in favor of KT. That overshield score gets found out by a pink ward, but with this blue buff transfer, he'll be able to kill it for free. Lots of wards in the bottom side currently, KT in really good situation. Poor vision for Janair. Wow. Nagne's starting to get way far ahead in lane here, too. Well, he's got so much protection. Look how many yeah. wards are around the mid lane. There's yeah. not really a way to gank him right now, and they've taken out all of Janair's wards. So they just have no idea if Evelyn's going to be waiting on the other side of the river to take a gank. Now they're going to find it, but they... Oh, close. Oh, nice try. Yeah. They got the ward. And, I mean, GBM, I suppose it could be worse, but not by much. I mean, he hasn't died yet. He's got that going for him. I just really don't understand the, the synergy between the Vayne and the, the Varus. I would have much rather seen an Ezreal, just anything that actually has poke this game, because otherwise, there's... There's nothing really you can do with this composition. You can't siege particularly well. Well, I mean, Varus has a lot of poke. You trade, you trade some survivability, but you also get the big, you know, hard engage ultimate too. So I feel like that's what Janair is kind of counting on. That there's no follow-up CC because Sejuani was banned this game. When we were to watching SK Telecom run it, they would follow up that ult with more hard CC, but right. they picked. Rumble and Rek'Sai, the best thing you can get is a Pulverize, and that's still pretty small in terms of CC AOE. I don't know, I'm very interested to see if they can pull this off and how it's going to happen, because right now I just can't picture it in my head. Well, they're behind right now, but they're not behind too far that it, it won't work, you know? We'll have to see a team fight. Maybe we will in a minute. Dragon coming up again. And Janera definitely wanting to get that one, I'm sure. Someday right there using his Righteous Glory. Playing a little bit behind. Yeah. The turret. Score is there. Ah, but they're going to see him with Tremor Sense again, though. Yep. Evelyn is so bad in Direct Sai. Yep. It's like her only advantage is taken away. Well, still not stopping it from taking out this pink ward. Yeah, they're going to be able to muscle their way in there and get it. Well, they're just a, they're afraid of Arrow right now. They know yeah, they, they can't take be. that 3v3. Mm -hmm. And now they're starting to move up, wanting to take this dragon. They already have a good ward right behind the pit. Oh, just died. Never mind. Yeah, it's been around for a little while. Varus coming back. Will Jyn'Air actually be able to poke them off of this? But it looks like Vayne just retreating to the Krugs at the moment. Well, GBM uh, just picked up his Brutalizer, so it's a it's a pretty good timing for him, honestly. He's got all the items he could really hope for at this point in the game without any kills. And so if they're going to poke, this is the time to do it. But they may just give it up. I don't think you can take this yeah. at all. I guess, uh, I guess not. And GBM moving up towards the top lane. They spot him with a ward as KT takes the dragon. 
GBM just rotating back down again. It doesn't look like they really even found an opportunity for any plays in the top lane either. Yeah, it's a pretty systematic dismantling of Jyn so far by KT this game. They just have so few ways to win this game, though, uh, besides crushing lane with this composition against what KT's throwing at them. Uh, it's they've, oh. they've made it hard on themselves due to their draft and the awkwardness of this team composition. And considering that they are behind already and they're not, in fact, crushing their lane. And here we go. Oh, teleport. Big dive down in bot lane. They're going to hit Pilot with the ultimate from Evelyn. Pilot trying to get away. Someday comes in with that twisted advance anyway. Pilot getting really low. There we go. Another kill for Arrow. Equalizer splits up KT a little bit, but not enough to make a big difference. They get a nice flame spitter onto him. And Trace still pretty tanky. There's a knockup with the Fates call, I believe. So he comes in for the headbutt. Pulverize. Arrow needs to be careful here. And Jenner making them back up. Where is GBM right now? Oh boy, oh, there it is! From downtown, GBM with the snipe. Wow, really Saw close that one right coming. there. Had to dodge the Prey Seeker, and then couldn't get out after having already used the Flash. So GBM actually finishing it off. GBM, of course, excellent at those long range skill shots. Dogday a little bit late to that party. Yep. But he still goes back to the mid lane, still gonna start clearing this out. Both top laners using teleport, so they killed the Vayne but lost one in return. And the shutdown gold onto GBM, really nice to have. Wow, and look at this second item QSS from Pilot, too, just feeling all that pressure from just not having any peel. That's crazy. Yeah. You can see that damage right now, nearly 500 coming in off the Q. Yeah, not bad at all. And he's got the Ionian Boots of Lucidity now, too, so just stacking up that CDR. Yeah, hitting Cassie B is a problem though, because she does get so fast. She does. For a character with no legs, she's pretty quick. There's a nice poke though. So nice turnaround dive by KT. Almost successful, but they don't get any turret off of it, so their gold lead actually doesn't increase whatsoever. That goes down a little bit. Yep. But well, they do have the second dragon, I suppose. Yeah, they're stacking off the dragon right now. That's going to be absolutely huge for them moving forward in this game. And the ward's starting to come in from Jyn Air now. They're finally able to put some into the enemy jungle and get that rolling, as well as some control over the crab on the bottom side. So Jyn Air fixing their lack of vision, which plagued them early in this game. There is a pink ward there. Looks like they didn't see it. So this dive is going to be very telegraphed. Yeah, not a lot of mystery there. Chaser there just as a backup in case they try anything overly rash. And Pink Ward is ping, so now they have a very good idea of what was going on. I mean, it's still a fairly close game, but it's just when you look at Jyn Air, they need to be just so much more careful about they, how they move around the map and engage in team fights than KT does. The, the room for the margin of error is much it's smaller like for Jyn Air, yeah. <laughs> Exactly, so if they win this game, it'll be pretty impressive. Sweet, getting hit with that Tibber is taking a lot of damage already. Arrow loading in the Spears. Meanwhile, score takes red. That's nice to see. KT invading the jungle and doing damage to Sweet at the same time. And here we go, going on it. On to Chaser right now. A little bit of damage, but yeah, score does take the red buff. And KT just taking little bits and pieces away from Jyn Air this game. Well, I know if they just keep applying the pressure that this Varus is going to be very slow moving around the map, and they that Jyn Air has to have time to set up to get the poke. Yeah. So if you play a fast tempo game like this where you constantly threaten them, it actually works out pretty well for you. Uh, looks like they were seen heading out. A little Prey Seeker through the brush just to make sure no one was there. And the CS lead still maintained for KT. Score just hanging out in lane quite a bit. Chaser playing a very defensive game this time, just trying to keep eyes onto Evelyn. Yeah. Oh, oh. score. <laughs> That'd be a pretty tough gank to make work, I think. Especially with the cleanse. Yeah. Even if you flash, uh, Petrifying Gaze is going to get out of that instantly. Yep. Oh, nice. Get on to Nagne. Another one. Not bad. I mean, GBM, he is good with his skill shots, so. Yep. He's very good at these long-range skill shots. If anyone's ever seen his Zareth, they know that. Oh, yeah. 
Very good accuracy. A good mechanical player. So now score. Score has had such a hard time getting yeah. the ganks in onto the lanes. 43 seconds up until the next dragon ever. Score will eat an arrow in the meantime. Uh, I think he'll be fine with that. And they don't have much vision cleared in this bottom side while Chaser goes through the jungle, adding another round of wards so that they can see who's coming in. So GBM needs to get position in this river so they actually have some form of poke. Callista goes back, gets a static shift now. So really just Callista in an extremely good space at this point in the game. And Pilot still with that singular damage item. We probably get, oh, he's gonna get Berserker Greaves and a dagger. So that isn't probably going to be that impactful at Silver 23 bolts, minutes into this game. Yeah, that is. Uh, Silver Bolts. The, this point, the Callista definitely with a pretty huge advantage. They're going to get the Crab as well. A sweet Mrs. Ward over the wall I'm to go to. Had to throw down two. And KT going after this dragon yet again. They're going to get the speed shrine from that Rift Scuttler as soon as Arrow decides to rend, which he's not going to do apparently. Saving it for the dragon. Chaser comes in. They don't get the dragon. Someday taking a little bit of damage. Rend. Rend beats Smite. And KT backing away. That's a pretty good equalizer for Jin Air now. Arrow still backing away. Fates call use and he gets out. Wow, nice hop Ooh. over the wall right there too. Yeah, Didn't have close. to use the flash at all. Great disengage from KT. Take the objective and they get out. They're probably going to lose their mid lane turret for it, but the fact that they've already gotten three... Oh, I would not teleport. <laughs> well, here comes Arrow. Someday actually going in the... Well, the turret's down now. Someday has to back away. Wow. Flash ult from Nagne. That is big. Chaser going to go down. Timbers came in too to help with the CC. And now Pilot in a little bit of trouble. Nice Arrow comes in from GBM, but it's just not enough damage. That's a double kill for Arrow. Wow, going for a Baron too. Really playing it. A little bit risky, but Trace's TP is down, so they don't have to worry about it, and they've got the execute from the Kalista. The GBM can poke so hard, though, with his Qs. I, they're going to kill Baron so fast, so it may not matter. Oh, boy. They got yeah, it. Yeah, that's it's fine. Should be fine. Another arrow coming in. Yeah, just not enough damage. That's that. Wow, KT, six kills into this game, really snowballing hard. And look at Nagne, too. Has the Rylize as a second item, actually. Not really something we ever see on Cassiopeia's here in Korea. Yeah. But just that extra tankiness to deal with the poke. And also, once a target gets locked down by Maokai and by Evelyn, there's no going anywhere after that. Because once the Cassiopeia starts targeting you with those twin fangs, you're going to get hit for that repeated 35% slow. And that's pretty damn good on Varus and Vayne to keep them permaslowed like that. So yeah. this is a really bad situation for Jin Air. See, I feel like GBM's problem lately is that he keeps picking champions that he's obviously good on, but are just not good champions. Well, Varus. Varus, I mean, they can be good, but it's just there's better options, you like, know? Like you said, the margin of error is low on these champions. Yeah. So, And especially this composition is probably the worst Varus comp we've seen yet. Yeah, it's so. really bad for Varus. Well, he's kind of on his own, you know? He's kind of got to keep himself safe, find opportunities. He doesn't really have a front line giving him easy arrows. No, instead, he has a front line not preventing arrow from easily getting in. Yeah. <laughs> he's, bring, he's trying to bring the arrows against the actual arrow. <laughs> Don't bring, it, don't bring arrows to an arrow fight. Well, Chaser's getting cut off right here. Yeah, a little bit caught. Goes under the wall. There's a nice ult from Score. Equalizer comes down, though. Jinair not too deterred. Oh, they're going to pull Annie right back in. Nice response by Arrow, actually, to that headbutt from Sweet. And KT on the disengage now. Oh, Nagne waiting for an opportunity to come in here with the ult. Someday it's going to jump in. Arrows from... Uh, GBM doing a bit of damage here, but yeah, KT, they don't need to fight this. They can just back away. They've got the Baron. They've got the pressure. They took out the jungle. And I wonder to what extent KT leaving Callista up on red side really messed with Jyn Air's heads in the draft because you don't expect that to happen. Yeah. Even if KT has done it before, you don't expect it to happen against Pilot or Jyn Air because they've been one of the teams that has 
been most preferential to using Callista, but I thought it was a really good idea against Jen Air just because of the situation that it presented Pilot where he either takes it and then he knows that the Alistair Urgot is coming or they take Alistair and then the Annie came in. It was either going to be Callista Annie or Callista Thresh. So they really did minimize Pilot's ability to contribute in this game and then focused him. Yeah, well, diving the bottom lane turret, killing Pilot. It's a great game plan for KT coming in. Yeah, well, I mean, like we talked about earlier, Jenner has been relying so much on Pilot that they kind of had the, they, KT decided to give him the choice between an AD carry that can't carry really very much, an Urgot, or an AD carry like Vayne that can, but is very vulnerable. And either way, they're prepared. Yeah, and they didn't set up with this mid lane. Knowing that there was a Cassiopeian mid lane, GBM started as an Orianna player. He could absolutely play Orianna with Vayne into this composition and be okay. Yeah. But, but not but the Varus hype it. train, man. The Varus hype train is rolling through Korea right now. All the mid laners want to try it. I'm done with it, Doa. <laughs> Were you ever started with it to no, begin with? No, I was not. I didn't think so. Well, Janair continuing just to be slowly pushed back into their base. Next dragon up in about a minute, and if KT takes this one, it's going to be a big problem for Janair. Yeah, that mid lane fight was really good by KT too. I thought it was a little bit forward to teleport into that turret, and it was risky too because Jenner could have killed it before it actually the teleport completed. Right. But they had the setup there with the flank coming in, and because Jenner tried so hard and committed so hard to taking that tower out, it was really easy for the Evelyn and the Tibbers flank to come through, and then for the follow up crowd control from Maokai, and then just absolute destruction of the Jenner team so here we go 20 seconds till this dragon spawns and almost certainly KT takes number four yeah it looks like it's I mean it's gonna be as hard as it always has been this game for Jyn Air. try to make a play here TP oh yep score coming in from behind and uh, pilot already in trouble there we go someday push back by that Condemn, not able to get quite on to Vayne here. Sweet going deep, Arrow loading a lot of damage in, and Pilot just wrapped up completely. Someday gets the kill there. Goodbye, Sweet. Another kill comes in for Arrow. I believe that's his sixth this game. And that's and what we yeah. could have seen from Spenu last that's, game, that's remember? Right. Yeah, it's true. That's what we could have seen from Spenu last true. game. True. or KT, rather, executing it much better. Yeah. Or I should execute it, it at all. A attempting to execute it and then executing it well. Right. Spenu never really tried. To be fair to CJ, they did actually do a good job of clearing wards so that had a much lower percentage chance of happening and they uh, played cautiously. There was still a lot of opportunities, but Spenu just. Yeah. A bit of rookie. <laughs> rookie. All right, well now Arrow has an Infinity Edge as well and an That's Elixir nice. of Wrath, and there is no armor. There is only Magic Resist on Jyn Air, so basically he will be carving through them with ease. Pretty much. Yeah, I don't really know what Jyn Air can do at this point. I mean, the poke just isn't there. The team fight is certainly not there. Pilot was more or less soloed by Someday last game, or last uh, fight, rather. Uh, he was driven out very quickly yeah. and just flashed after by Sunday with a twisted advance who then Arcane smashed him and then toggled his ult to finish him off. Yep, farm continues to grow. Well, KT. nobody nobody can even be in the same lane as Arrow right now because they don't have the items in order to actually get anything from him. The only kill that Jyn Air has in this game was that solo snipe on the dive from GBM. Yeah, pretty much. And that was barely a kill anyway. Well, I feel like GBM's played this Varus about as well as he could be expected to. Under the circumstances, sure. Yeah, exactly. One more Baron or KT Rolster. Yep, it's back. And KT not it gonna waste any time so to start fast. it. Goodbye. Wow, Baron just getting absolutely murdered. Equalizer comes through, doesn't really reach into the Baron pit too far. There's the Baron now, someday just body blocking in the back lines. Now Arrow comes over the wall, goes on to Trace immediately. Pilot's still taking a lot of damage. Tibbers goes down, score, drops his ult as well. Pilot being chased back, and KT doesn't necessarily need to follow this up. Arrow even gets hit with the Chains of Corruption and a Q from 
GBM, and it's not enough. Look at that, just sustaining back up off the ward even. Yeah, three hits on that ward, nearly back to full health right now. But you can tell that GBM is doing decent damage if he can land some of these abilities. And now oh, yeah. there's less of a chance to dive. So it depends on how many skill shots he can hit as oh. far as how KT gets in this siege. GBM can hit a lot, but a lot is not enough. He needs to hit like more than is possible, you know? I don't know, they got some good hits right there, and now they're gonna back off someday down to only about one-third HP. Yeah, but I mean, they got the Baron, they got the kills, they got the turret. Did it really stop much? No, I mean, especially because that's the safe choice right here. Go back, yeah. take the tier two on the bottom side, considering the wave is in a good place, and then next dragon is fifth dragon. Why yeah, not go get that as well? There's no reason to take a risk. You're 13,000 gold ahead right now, nine to one in kills, four to zero in dragons. Arrow just went back and bought QSS, so he's not going to be vulnerable to the Chains of Corruption anymore either. Yep, that's true. Yeah, not a lot that Jyn'Air can do still. We've been, we've been saying it all game, but it's it's true. They're just, from the very beginning, they've picked themselves into a composition that just does not work well against KT. Yeah. Well, here we go. Baron Empowered push on the bottom side. Last remaining. Oh no, there's a tier two turret in mid lane. It was just covered by Rek'Sai tunnel, so I couldn't see it. So they push that up just a little bit with Cassiopeia before they begin the siege. They should have their abilities back up for a dive right now, but instead they're gonna walk into the mid lane and take that out after prepping the wave in advance. So easy turret. So that's another tier two from this Baron. And You'd imagine they can probably get the other one in bot lane as well. Yeah, you know, only 15,000 gold ahead, whatever. Yeah, just 15,000, not much. Just a little bit. Oh, yep, there goes the turret. Big shock. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, Jyn'Air just did not have a lot of margin fare the whole time. I mean, you kind of think of it like both teams have hammers and they need to hammer in a nail. KT has a regular hammer, and Jyn Air has a hammer that's made of glass. <laughs> so you can hammer in the nail. It's just going to be incredibly hard to do it. It can get the job done, but you're probably not going to be able to make it happen. It's a great analogy. So they're just going to recall. They're not even going to try and see how far they get onto the tower. They want to go get their items and set up well in advance for this dragon here a minute early. That's a very conservative approach. Of course, a lot of teams would have just tried to put some damage down onto that tower, see if they had a window, and then just walked over to the dragon when it spawned. But this yeah. is maximum, maximum caution. Oh. Score also has a banner of command now. Nice. The manor banner, it's That's here. Right. More like banner of the man. Score, the man with the banner plan. He is. That's right. Is he the Incredible Hulk? Because he's looking like Bruce Banner to me. Jeez. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> he's definitely not. No, he's, he's not. He's playing a small blue lady, he's not a Evelyn. giant green man. That's true. Yeah. No, no Zack or Mundo, which are kind of the closest to Hulk, I guess, we can get in League. Here we go. Oh, here we go. Yeah, coming in. There's the ult on to GBM. Score a little bit ahead of the party, though. He's going to take a lot of damage, getting chained as well. Meanwhile, Arrow raining damage on from the side someday creating that big front line yet again and the kills starting to happen here one for Cassiopeia one for Calista Trace coming in from behind and then being like nope and backing away score over the wall again a double kill for Nogne they don't even need this dragon they can probably just end uh, well they probably can't end right now but they can take out an inhibitor I'd imagine the dragon was a lie they just wanted to bait them into an engage that's actually the yep. second time that KT has done that it's tried to set him up and so Jyn Air starts to walk into their own jungle and then a ward absolutely destroys their hopes as Score and Someday come in from opposite angles and pincer them. Oh, they're gonna get two inhibitors, aren't they? Why not? Yes. And they can just kind of casually take a fifth dragon on their way out. He's gotta drive up their KDAs. They thought, they really thought Pilot had too many, too many kills, too many assists, not enough deaths, 31 KDA, well, we'll just tank it for you, 0-4-0. Zero, <laughs> Yeah, that'll, that'll Goodbye. hurt a little bit. Goodbye, KDA. Oh, well, it was fun while it lasted, right? Meanwhile, Arrow. Yeah, 7-1-6. This is the most casual fifth dragon I think I've ever seen. <laughs> Nogbe ulted that. the scuttle Surrender, crap. Surrender, and appropriately surrendered, I think, Jyn'Air, knowing that they 
had uh, no chance at all to take that one. And uh, KT, I believe, gets our first uh, surrender of the season. Uh, no, was we, it? Had, we had another surrender oh, okay. earlier. But all right. Almost the first surrender of the season. Sorry. Very nearly the first surrender of the season. Certainly not that many. And wow, dominating performance from KT Rolster. Can Jenner bounce back from this one? Really feel the problem started in the draft right there, and then they didn't adapt well as KT's picks came in. So yep. see what else Jenner has up their sleeve. That's right, a win for KT, looking uh, pretty dominant in game number one, but again, a 